In this video, we're going to study arc length and area of a surface of revolution for parametric equations. Previously in this course, we studied how to find the arc length of a rectangular equation. So just to refresh your memory, this was the function that we used. So we took our function, we found the derivative, we squared it, we added it to one, and we took the square root, and then we integrated that. So yes, integration is back. Now, we're dealing with parametric equations, so instead of just one function, we have two functions, both with respect to t, or using the notation that we've been using, dx over dt and dy over dt. So this is the one that we're going to focus on as we are working through these examples. Let's take a look at our first example. We're asked to find the arc length of the curve on the given interval, and the interval is from 1 to 4. And 1 to 4 is really just telling us the limits of integration. So I'm trying to find the arc length from 1 to 4 of the square root, and now we have to find dx dt, which is the derivative of x with respect to t. So obviously, x is a function of t, and that gives me 12t. And I also need to find dy dt, dy of dt, which is 6t squared. So essentially, I'm just going to plug those values in. So this is going to be 12t and then squared, because we're going to take that and square it, just as we did before. And then I'm going to add to that 6t squared squared. And that's all with respect to t. So this gives me the integral from 1 to 4. Just doing some algebra, 12t quantity squared is 144t squared. 6t squared squared would give me 36t to the fourth with respect to t. Doing just a little bit of simplification, I can factor a 36t squared out of both terms, and that leaves me with 4 and 1. Just, uh, sorry, 4 and t squared, 1t squared. Now the reason that's important is because 36t squared we can take the square root of that. So we can actually go ahead and get that out of our square root. So that's going to be 6t, and then what's left over is the square root, and I'm just going to write it as t squared plus 4. So now what I'm going to do is a u substitution. I'm going to let u be the radicand, which is t squared plus 4, and du then be the derivative of u, which is 2t dt. Don't forget your dt. And so what that tells me is in order to integrate, I need 2t on the inside. So I'm just going to think of this as 3 on the outside, and then 2t, and then t squared plus 4 dt. Because now this is essentially u to the 1 half, and you can certainly rewrite it as u, but you don't have to. The reason I don't like to do that is then you have to change those limits of integration. And that's just more work than I'm willing to do. So I'm just making sure that it fits my pattern. And my pattern says, okay, I've got 3 on the outside. Then if I integrate essentially u to the 1 half, I get u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, which is like u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. So let's go ahead and write that as times 2 thirds instead and see what happens. Well, and then of course this is uh, from 1 to 4. So the 3's will cancel out and u is actually t squared plus 4 to the 3 halves. So really what I have left is 2 times t squared plus 4 to the 3 halves from 1 to 4. So that's what I'm going to integrate. So let's give myself a little bit of room up here. And let's go ahead and integrate that. So now I have 2 times, let's plug in 4 first. 4 squared is 16 plus 4 to the 3 halves. And I'll just leave the 2 on the outside. So minus 1 squared, or 1 plus 4 to the 3 halves. 
So this gives me two on the outside, and then this is um, basically the square root of 20 cubed, and this is the square root of five cubed. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to think about 20 as Again, breaking this down into radical four and radical five, that gives me two radical five cubed minus radical five cubed. So that's going to give me, again, two on the outside. And you can do a lot of this in your head. I'm just taking you through step by step so we have all of our, you know, all of our rules. Um, two cubed would give me eight, and then radical five cubed would give me five radical five. And then radical five cubed would give me five radical five. So essentially what I have is still two on the outside and I have 40 radical five here minus five radical five. So I have 35 radical five, which is 70 radical five which is about 156.525. So if they give, if they want an exact answer, which typically they will, then you'll stick with that radical answer. And if they want an approximate answer, I could have stopped way up here and just plugged it into my calculator. Uh, but you get the idea that, you know, math is math. Sometimes you just have to work through it. So previously we studied how to find the area of a surface created by taking that arc and revolving it about a line or the x or y axis. And all we did, because we were trying to find the area, we were essentially finding the circumference several times and that's why we're integrating. So we're taking it by 2 pi r and r would sort of change based on if we were going about the x-axis or the y-axis. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We've got 2 pi, and we're going to use g of t, which was that y function um, about the x-axis, or f of t, which is that x function if we're rotating about the y-axis. So let's take a look at an example. So let's take a look now at just one example, and this one's going to get a little bit ugly in terms of the final solution, but we're going to make it work. So again, we are going about the y-axis, so I've given you the correct formula here. And I'm just going to jump right in. So this says to find the area of the surface, I'm going to take 2 pi, and I'm going to integrate from 1 to 2, because those are the limits of integration given to me. So I'm going to cross that off because I've used it. And I'm going to cross off y-axis because that's how I have chosen the correct formula. f of t is going to be whatever your x equation is. So if we were integrating with respect to the x-axis, then I would be using y instead of x. But in this case, I've got x, which is 1 third t cubed. And then I'm going to take the square root of dx dt. So essentially, what's the derivative of 1 third t cubed? It's t squared, and I'm going to square it. And then what's the derivative of t plus 1, which is just 1, and I'm going to square it. Now let's do just a little bit more simplification. Anything we can do to simplify. So I'm going to take the 1 third out, so that's 2 thirds pi on the outside. Integrating from 1 to 2, I've got t cubed here, and t squared squared is t to the fourth, and 1 squared is 1. So that's with respect to t. Let's do some u substitution. So if u was t to the fourth plus one, then du would be four t cubed dt. And so I know that I'm going to need a four here, which I need a one fourth now on the outside in order to compensate for that. So now I have, doing a little bit of reduction, I have one, or just pi over six instead of one six pi. Pi over six, and now I've got the integral from one to two of u to the one half du. And again, you don't have to rewrite it in terms of u. A lot of times it's easier not to. I'm going to cheat and not change those limits of integration. This is going to give me pi over six, and then u to the one half 
gives me um, u to the two, uh, sorry, three halves, u to the three halves, so that's t to the fourth plus one to the three halves, and then divided by three halves, which is times two thirds, integrated from one to two. So doing just a little bit more simplification, I'm going to reduce and reduce and get pi over nine, and then I have plugging in two, I get 17 to the three halves minus two to the three halves. And from here, I'm not going to continue because this is going to be a ridiculous um, solution, but obviously I'm just going to use my calculator to um, estimate. And so if I use my calculator to estimate, I get about 23.48. And that's it. Up next, we're going to take a look at polar coordinates and coordinate conversion.